whatever it is is bigger than ten pound. Oh, now it's getting now he's getting angry. Like, whoa, oh, whoa. now oh he's my God. he's on. Oh my God! Yeah, go on, son. Here we are, guys, and welcome back to the channel. Say hello, the wingman. Hello, guys. Nice to be out with you again, sir. As always, buddy. Welcome along. I'm the bass man. We are at Plymouth in the Tamar. Not in the Tamar. <laughs> Next to the Tamar. The tide is a mega big tide. And I think it's on Monday. It's a six meter tide down here, which is unheard of. Yeah, so it's going to be up over the wall here. Low pressure, baby. That's it. Plymouth sunk. <laughs> anyway, is there a 40 pound eel at the end of the rainbow with my name on it? That's what I want to know, because that's why I'm here, guys. Is there a 40 pound eel at the end of the rainbow? Yeah, well, mate, you've got a long way to go to get to the end of the rainbow, I think. <laughs> <laughs> it's a figure of speech. But it's there, isn't it? I had yeah. to use it. Yeah? yeah. So, God bless, God save the king and all that. Especially. Now he's. Um... Especially at these at this difficult time. So, yes, God save the king. We are at King Billy. Some nice line. We're going to go into this in a minute. We're going to, we'll get Wingman set up because he's dying to get set up. And so am I. So I've got some new line on the reels. I've got these rods are going out and this one's just going over the wall with a pop-up on it. And I'm going to catch a reasonably sized eel on that rod just over the side. So yeah, we've got some lovely bait, look. <laughs> and it's not uber fresh. That, 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 that one is. You can see that one is. Uber fresh, you know. Um, yeah, I went in the market and got that this morning. I think he likes to put in a couple of the old ones in with the new ones just to get, you know. So I know that trick. Anyway, yeah, so welcome along. We've got some mackerel for bait. We've got some nice big, we've got some nice big rigs. 9-0 hooks, 200 pound line. So we've got all the gear and all the idea. And let's show you how to go congering properly with the right gear, sir. Welcome along, let's go fishing. Hi, lines. Is there a 40 pound eel at the end of the rainbow? Right, so here we are. Here's my uh, Carlos Fandango pop-up Maximus rig. So it's going to float around like that, isn't it? Yep. Mr. Mackle, he's looking a bit sorry for himself there, look. Hello. Hello, bus man and wingman. Right, are you ready? I'm going to fill it this mackerel now. And this is a flapper. So I'm going up one side of the bone. So there's the, there's the ribs there, look. Very easy. You don't need to go all the way up. And then on the other side's a little bit trickier. As long as you're gentle and slow. Oh, hang on, have I just gone through it? Oh, you twat. Uh, uh, idiot. <laughs> so yeah, if you're careful, you won't go through the bone, like I just did. And you go up to there with that side look, and then all you do is pull out the middle part. So, that bit yeah. there goes in the tide. And there you have a macro flapper. Look there. But mine's a tri-flapper, look. Mine's not just a normal, mine's a tri-flapper. I've got extra flappage there, look. Tri-flapper. Yeah, mate. So, let's push that through there, and there you go. And that's really sharp. Look, for a big hook, that is... And this isn't like a... This isn't a Fladden <laughs> circle hook, by the way. This is a eagle claw, heavy, you know, meat heavy hook, easy, tuna yeah. job. So nothing is going to bend that. And obviously, it's... Uh, there's quite a lot of uh, poppage on there, isn't there? Yes, mate. So look, look, look what happened. Let's get it in the tide, look. One sec. There you go, look. Already it's turning into the tide and he's starting to flap. So that actually, when it's down on the bottom and that tide's hitting it, it's going to actually look a bit more natural. Look, like, a, you know, it's not going to look like a dead fish, is it? It's going to be, have a nice bit of wrigglage. Yes. So you can see the pop, I've overdone the pop-ups there. You didn't need that many, but I think that was an experimental pop-up from last year. Drop it. Down you go, mate. And I've caught conga like this before, haven't I? Yes, mate. Yeah. I think it was about eight or nine pound, wasn't it? Yeah, it weren't. It weren't. No, but for over the wall. Wall, yeah. Yeah, but we blanked out there. Yeah. So. And that is how you do it. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Very, very easy. Show you how easy it is and the best way, the, the best way to put on a mackerel. 
so you don't snag the bottom so easy. So I've got there 200 pound line, let's have all the gear, the right gear, a 2.0 swivel, 200 pound line, right, a 9.0 hook, and that's not a big hook for congering, all right, and it's sharp, that's the most important bit. As long as it's sharp, it's fine. And then all I've just got here, look, is a rotten bottom weak link that I've made, so that's 20 pound line on there, just a little link, so the theory is that gets jammed in and not your everything else it doesn't always work but yeah so i've got the granny knicker elastic and i better not make a mess of this table or i might get told off by somebody in the comments so i'm going to do it here on the uh washable table right so anyway there's the mackerel look. so we're going to sew it on so I'll, through there right through that trust me to hit the bone look. there you go so pull it through a bit like knitting this not that I know how to knit. So through again, and then you pull that through. And then what you've got there, you've got, now you can put your hook in here. Now, traditionally, uh, you've probably seen this before me saying this, but most people would go that way and tie it on. Uh, that's all well and good if it's a clean ground, but you know, if you put it on like that, that, that is either gonna land like that, or guess what? Like that, with the hook straight in the snags, all right? So this way is up through the gills and out of the top of the head. So this is the best way to hook a mackerel on rough ground. So you just gently pull it, see the points just there, look, pull it up like that, and then pull your, pull your, your line down. And there you've got a really nice- Knitted mackerel. Mackerel, and what happens, look, it hits the floor and it's either like that way or it lands that way. So either way, it's not snagged, is it? Right, it's, it's, it's at the top of the head. So you've got a much better chance of getting that back straight away just by doing that. And then all I do then, look, and this is why I use the knicker elastic. And by the way, mackerel is the second best bait for conger because obviously it's oily, it's soft. It's really, really easy for them to eat and digest. Shut up, seagull. Right, just, I don't, I don't use much string, but just round that, that bit there, look, nice and tight. And then literally this bit here, pull that down tight. And it's literally like, literally a few turns. So I don't want that much string out there. And that's that bit done and back up. And then I like to finish round here, like a real hard, really tight. And what this does is you can see already it's starting to ooze a little bit. So the tighter you can go at this point, and this will start here, look. See, it's starting to ooze the blood. And then I'll go around the loop. And then what I do, the last thing I do before I throw this out, and I'm not gonna take the tail off because that's just gonna let the crabs in or anything else small get into it. The very last thing I do is get my knife and just carefully in the stomach there, look, in the guts, like that, down through the stomach. And then finally, I'll just actually make it bleed even more and give it a couple of stabs in the head like that. And that now is oozing, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yes, that is a nice bait, my friends. That is a nice bait. Yes, I could eat it myself. Look, it's, look, it's, it's dripping down my hand, look. So that just goes to show you how much is coming out of it. Yes, here we go. Let's catch a conga. 40 pound. Oh, sorry, 40 pound. Over all of the rainbows. Yeah, the rainbow looks gone. <laughs> yes, lines. So we're using 40 pound line straight through, no leader. And the cheaper, cheaper the better. Cheaper, cheaper the line is better for congering. And I'll tell you why. The, the dearer stuff you buy is already pre-stretched. This stuff isn't. So it's nice and stretchy, which is what you want for eeling really, isn't it? When you think about it. But yeah, you know, you're looking at what, £4.50 or something for a spool of that, and it does two two big reels like that. Yeah, Stephen's after your mackerel, I think. No, he's not going to have it. He's up he's up there bleating away. That's the worst thing about those young gulls, isn't it? Yep. That noise. Oh. Seagull. I've got one across from me from my house, and it obviously it's a fledgling, and it's like, oh. Mm, 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 all day. There yeah. you go. That's it. That's what you want. That's what you don't get with the skinny elastic. So that's just proven my point. Hey, I've, you've, you've got a fresher mackerel than me, you get. Look at that blood. 
There you go, mate. Right, get, it out. Out. get it out there. Sploosh. Just sploosh. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers, Bob. Monster assault. Monster assault. Did you see that? Yeah, mate. That was, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so my glasses, my reading glasses, were on there. We were standing up there. And they just landed there, honest to God. I kid you not, they almost went in the drink. Yes. I see your game. Right. <laughs> Let's see you do that again. So yeah, we've been here an hour now, and we've just been talking really, haven't we? Yeah. As you do. And we have got our feet up, so I hope nobody minds that on the bench. Yeah, so uh, conga fishing, it's, uh, there's a lot of waiting involved a lot of the time. Really, on the Tamar, you, you want to be doing six hours, really, if you, if you want a really good chance of an eel, like the whole tide. But I will tell you, the best times are on the, obviously on the bigger tides at this end, but on the back tide, halfway down, down to low, and just on the first of the flood is probably the best time and you lose less gear because you've got a reef out there which slopes down like that. And on, and on the ebb tide, you, you your gear tends to get washed away from it. Whereas on the flood, it tends to push into the reef, comes back into the reef. Don't ask me why. Here we go. This is a... This is the Tamar. It is ripping, man. Rods are bending in. I would not like to be caught in that. I hate weed. You're on the weed again. <laughs> that is Captain Hook. Yeah, ever since I made this one, um, you haven't used it. Uh, no, <laughs> I think I think there's something wrong with that. <laughs> it's cursed, is it? It's cursed, mate. Cursed of the cur cursed uh, of the gaff. Never, never go eeling without one. It is a safety device between you know it's between you and the eel. It's 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 a bit of distance between you and the eel, isn't it? Yes. And also, especially if you're on a rock mark and it's you know you've got a bit of a swell coming up and down. It's not long enough, really. No, no, I'd, I was just about to say that, mate. No. I'd like a longer one, but... Oh, we all would, you mate. <laughs> you had to say it, didn't you? You had to say Sorry. it. Sorry. Yes. Nothing to see here. Right, we are rolling here, son. So this is the one I just literally lobbed out onto the reef, about 30 yards. Yeah. Oh. I'm locked. Here we go. Ooh. Oh. I'm going to go for it. Locked in. He's on. He's on there. It's a big enough. Here we go, look. That's the fish doing that. Bloody hell. Jammed in. This ain't over. I get the feeling there's a 15 or 20 pound eel on that down there. Just slowly it go that. Wow. I reckon it's hooked and it's just doing that reversing thing. Just trying to get off. Oh, it's a bit of excitement anyway. If that was a small eel. The rod would be, sh it would be shaking, rattling, yeah. wouldn't it? It would be a rattly bite, a rattly yeah. sort of thing. That's a big eel, mate. That is a big eel on there. Oh, gutted. Four minutes in, folks, and uh, patience is the game. Oh, yeah, we've had too many blank videos. Come on. I need a fish. 
So what Paul's hoping for here is for the fish to swim his way out. Yes. Whatever it is, it's bigger than ten pound. Oh, now it's getting now he's getting angry. Like, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Now oh he's my God. he's on. Oh my God! Yeah, go on, son. No, it's jammed in, mate. No. Yeah, he's on there though. That is that is a big eel, mate. Goodness. That was some power, <laughs> wasn't it? <laughs> got, you see got, that? Got your head bumping, isn't it, mate? Oh my gosh. Yeah, he's uh, not, not liking that, mate. I wonder if he just t bought himself off then. Nothing's happened since. Right, put him down for a minute then, mate, and see what happens. Oh, hang on, he's he, back. He can only do one thing and tea butt it. I wonder if I should let some line out. Bloody hell, mate. That, whoa! Yes, <laughs> mate, that's big. a good fish. That is big. We've just got to wait. Patience, mate. I don't know. I don't want you to... Uh, it's running out of my patience. Oh, I had a little bit on him then. Oh, wow. Got him. Go on, got son. Him, got him. Yes. There you go. Jesus, Brett. Go on, mate. You're all right. You got me on the pod. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's just let go. No. Oh, oh my God. Mate. Say, be. Well, what can I say, Po? Mate, unlucky. Just, just chuck me in, mate. Mate, mate, uh, can you turn your light off for a minute? Can you, can, can you apologise on the camera Sorry. for swearing? Yeah. Oh my. Oh, mate, I know. I know. That was a big eel, mate. I oh, know it was. Look yeah. at that. Right. There's me shaking as well. Right, and that's what you were zooked into, mate. Someone's, someone's dipper, dipper line. Look, razor sharp. Dipper line. It wasn't hooked, was it? No, mate. He was just he was tethered into that. <sighs> mate. Come on, mate. He could be still out there. Twenty. That was twenty. Come on. That was definitely twenty. It was twenty. I was like that. Well, the nagger was folded, mate. Wasn't I it? know. I was folded. <laughs> Blank videos. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Right. Oh, mate. Oh, well. Nothing wrong there. I didn't do anything wrong there. Nothing wrong there whatsoever. No. And I waited and waited and waited. waited. There's nothing wrong with the line either, look. look. That's where he's at it. Right around the chop. <laughs> so <laughs> close. That is it, look. look. Oh, he's well. He's come in. Yeah. He's come in from the back there. Yeah. He's coming. He's coming that way. Yeah. Add it. Well. Right. Sorry, guys. What can I say? What can I? I can't really say anything. So I've just got chomped on that one. You can almost see the bite in it. It's a right chomp, isn't it? Let's hope it's the one I've just lost, eh? Is that out over the reef? Yeah, that's a little bit further, isn't it? A lot further. Right, we are rolling. Yes. Go on, son. Oh, lucky. Unlucky, mate. Uh, assume the position. Uh, I had it going as well. I know you did. That was a good eel. Two strikes and we're out. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, we ain't doing very well tonight, son. Mate, I had that shifting. You did, I've seen it coming. We've got a couple of pumps on it, I thought, yeah. hell. And then you nearly went yeah, over. Yeah, no, he is frayed, mate, look. He is frayed, look. If I go to there. Oh, yeah. Just there. Yeah. Yep, I see it. And there. And there. 
Could this be the last chance? Look at that. Yes. Right, please. Please, just one. See that? It's a nice heel, mate. If he's got more trace in it, it's both ours. <laughs> We haven't caught it yet, mate. <laughs> right over the reef. I won't, I won't risk it. Right. There he is. Yes! <laughs> Don't say anything. Oh, it's coming up really easy. Wee, there he is. Get over there, mate. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. Right. <laughs> Phantom <laughs> raspberry blur. Yeah. I, <laughs> so, so, I spit in your general direction. <laughs> What you an absolute what? piss take. I hate congruin. <laughs> and line it, he says. Yeah, well, yeah. It was it was a legit a legitimate reason. Mate, I'll handline you in a minute. <laughs> Mate, it was tiny. It wasn't tiny, I was struggling to get it up, man. It was at least seven pound. There we are, guys. What can I say? That's fishing. You win some, you lose some. But to lose everything is a bit of a piss take, isn't it? Yeah, mate. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Um, I, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I think it's a good video tonight. Um, even though we didn't come up with the goods, like we almost came up with the goods. And uh, yeah, Wingman lost one as well on the yeah. reef. Uh, yeah, but you know, that's congruent for you. So you win some, you lose some. And when you're fishing on reefs like that, it's very common to get snapped off or if they're not on properly. I think that one was hooked. And I think it, as I was wrestling up the wall, you know, it, weren't, it was a small eel, it was about seven pounds, it wasn't very big, but it was an eel, you know? It would have been nice just to show an eel, you And know? as you've seen in the latest videos or the yeah. other videos, they have a habit of T-barring themselves, don't they? They certainly do, mate. And yeah, you know, we tried, we, we fished our guts out here tonight and uh, yeah, I enjoyed it, have you? Yeah, mate, it's been a good At session. At least we've come here, yeah, we've had, well, I've actually had a good session because we've had chances. We're a nothing bit of action. The, nothing on the pop-up though, which is really surprising, because that usually throws up an eel. Yeah, uh, but it's a yeah, it's a big tide tonight. It's quite hard to fish here at times, especially when it's a massive tide. You do need the proper gear, yeah. So don't come down here with your, you know, your floppy sticks and all that, your pier rods, and fish the conga because it just doesn't work. doesn't work. You know, get yourself a Ron Thompson accelerator, uh, a second-hand one or a new one. You know, what are they? Hundred and twenty quid? Yeah, no. mate. I saw one on Facebook the other day, fifty quid, I think it was. There you go. Or one of the what's the other make? Is it the Sonic that has, they do a strong one or something? Uh, but yeah, there's loads of cheap, cheap, cheaper rods on the market that do the job just as well, if not better, you know. Uh, just I love the naggers. Uh, but yeah, soon I'll be using some different rods out. Uh, yeah, I was going to do the big announcement tonight, but I forgot, I, got, I forgot something really important to what I was going to say that goes with it. I forgot actually something. I'm not saying what that is, but I forgot to bring the really important bit with me. So sorry about that. So yes, yeah, so on the next video, maybe tomorrow, I'm out with uh, out with Frank Spencer tomorrow, I think. Oh, best of luck, mate. Betty. Yeah. <laughs> with, his, um, with his box. Yeah, you bet, you bet. You, you, you. But yes, thanks for tuning in, guys. Please share the love, hit the like, share it with your friends on WhatsApp or Telegram or wherever you want. Just, you know, it all helps everything. Leave a comment. But yeah, especially like and subscribe oh, if you yeah, haven't. Yeah, mate, that helps as well. You know, if you haven't seen any of my videos and this is your first one, well, this is kind of how we do things. It's a little bit different to maybe other sort of YouTube anglers out there. So yeah, I, I like to think that we're doing a really good job here and it's interesting, informative and inspirational, more importantly. So yeah, I'll be on the place soon, the little skinny flat place that I'm not going to take home because there's no meat on them. But yes, yeah, so I shall be out there very soon and I'll be using new rods this season. Lots of new rods. Almost gave it away. Tight lines, guys.